I'm a sucker for a beautiful bike, there's no hiding it. So I thought it was about time I ran through some of my favourite bikes in history, some of the most beautiful bikes in the world. Now I did require some help from John Cannings to narrow it down and we probably missed one or two so do let us know in the comment section below. Oh and one more thing before we start. All of the following bikes without question make it in to the bike vault with a big fat super nice. <laughs> First up, one of the most iconic bikes to leave the Colnago factory in Milan, the Colnago Mexico. It was built to celebrate Eddie Merckx's world hour record in the 1970s. The Mexico was built using Columbus record tubing and it had round oval chainstays. Colnago made a limited edition version, the ORO, a fully gold plated version that was presented to Pope John Paul II by none other than Ernesto Colnago himself. This has now, however, been returned to Colnago and it sits in the Colnago factory in Italy. Without a doubt, this is a beautiful looking bike, especially in gold, and I really like the little cutout on the bottom bracket of the Colnago logo. This bike almost looks too nice to ride, it definitely belongs on display just to look at. Hugo de Rosa, one of the greatest frame builders of all times. He supplied bikes to some of the best cyclists in the world, including Eddie Merckx and Francesco Moser. He manufactured masterpieces which had a strong influence in the cycling industry, such as the de Rosa Professional SLX. When Eddie Merckx retired from the pro peloton and set up his own bike brand, he sent his employers to de Rosa to learn his craftsmanship. And for one of the greatest cyclists in the world, who was very meticulous about his equipment, to choose De Rosa, then it must have been good. The SLX tube set was classed as super butted and the pro material of choice. It was constructed using Columbus SLX steel tubes, very light and stiff. The ends of the tubing were double butted for strength and the sectoral section was nice and thin to save weight. The professional SLX marked a turning point in history for De Rosa, making the link between modern and traditional steel frame designs. Next up, the Battling Arena 1981. This is a beautiful bike with a story behind it. The Arena 1981 is a limited edition frame set released in April 2019 to celebrate the return of the Giro finishing in the Verona Arena. This was a special anniversary for Apichinam Battling, as in 1981 the founder, Giovanni Battling, was the first a pro cyclist to win the Giro inside the ancient Roman arena. In 2019, it had been 38 years since his victory, and that's why they chose to only make 38 frames, which have all been sold. They were built totally from scratch to the owner's specifications in their very own workshop in Italy. They featured a numbered plate brazed onto the top tube. I think what makes this bike so special for me has to be the colour, the pink chrome mirror effect. I think it fits so nicely with the Giro theme and the little Italian flag on the top tube. I'm sure you'll all agree with me, this is an absolutely stunning bike. Next up, 51 handmade carbon bikes. Now these bikes are pretty cool because not one bike they make are the same. Each bike is totally different with a unique custom finish. And I think that's why we've chosen to put them in. The bikes can be anything the customer wants it to be. And it's pretty cool to think no one else in the whole wide world is gonna have the same bike as you. 51 have told us it takes up to a working week to produce the frame and then another week on top of that to do the custom paintwork. And I feel like this bike definitely deserves a place in the top six because it is just a masterpiece to look at. Another bike with some real gold on it now. You might remember this bike belonging to Vincenzo Nibali at the 100th edition of the Giro d'Italia back in 2017. This is Nibali's Gold Merida Sculptura that Merida made especially for Nibali. Now the attention to detail on this bike is absolutely stunning. 
obviously my favorite part being the gold leaf wrapped around the frame with the names of 100 winners from the Giro d'Italia up till 2017, including his name. Now, he must have felt very special rolling around the pro peloton on this bike. I'm sure it caught the eye of many riders in the peloton. But not only did they stop with the frame, there's gold details all over the bike, on the saddle, on the wheels and on the stem cap. Now this might possibly be one of my favourites. And it is, in my eyes, the coolest track bike ever. The Lotus Type 108. No, no, it's not a car. It's a track bike made purely for speed. It's the original design of a guy called Mike Burrows who designed something very similar back in 1985 called the Wind Cheater. But due to UCI rules, it couldn't be used in competition. A few years later, a keen cyclist and test driver for Lotus, Rudy Truman, bumped into Burroughs in a local bike shop. Burroughs showed Truman the wind cheater. Truman then took the wind cheater into the Lotus offices and they loved it and they decided to make the Lotus a Type 108 off the wind cheater prototype. The prototype of wind cheater wasn't actually that light, it wasn't that stiff and it actually wasn't that aerodynamic. So the engineers and experts at Lotus worked off the prototype to come out with the Lotus Type 108. Lotus Type 108 was a revolutionary concept in terms of its design because of its aerofoil cross section, but also because of the carbon composite monocoque construction. You can tell that every single little detail has been thought about on this bike to get all the gains out of it. Even the handlebars on the bike are very similar to what track riders are still using now. And I think those are the poshest elbow pads I have ever seen. So those are some of the most beautiful bikes in the world, in my eyes anyway. Let us know what one was your favorite out of those six and let us know if we've missed any in the comment section below.